Hello everybody and welcome to the studio. In today's video, we are gonna be going over the brand new Alexa Mini LF, the MILF. We are actually shooting this particular video on the MILF and this is the 40 millimeter quick speed Pencro to go along with it just to give you an idea of what we are working with. So this is a brand new camera. It's just now starting to trickle out into the hands of cinematographers and production companies and rental houses. So very soon, if you haven't seen this camera in person, very soon, I think this camera will become the workhorse of the industry. And in today's video, we're gonna be going over my top five features that maybe you missed. Maybe you saw the spec sheet, maybe you saw the press releases, but now that it's getting out into people's hands, we're gonna look at the top five features that I think are going to make the biggest impact when it comes to getting better results from your cinematography, whether you're a director or a cinematographer or a crew member. All right, so let's get straight into it. This is number five of my favorite new features, and that is the same, but different. The Alexa Mini LF is essentially an Alexa Mini. The body is pretty much the same. They've made a few minor adjustments that we'll get into, but for all intents and purposes, it is the same exact shape. Uh, it is a box, it's modular. It's one of the reasons that the Alexa Mini has now become the staple of the industry when it comes to commercials and narrative projects. You find them more and more. I think at first, Aerie thought that it was going to fill in a very niche gap where you needed it on a gimbal, you needed the camera in a car or in a very small setup, but they found that people have been using them built out to full A cams on features and commercials. And they have kept the same body with the Alexa Mini LF. That's great because all of the advantages that are there in the Alexa Mini and present there, they carry over to the MILFs. It's the same exact shape, body, everything, except for a few key improvements those key improvements bring me to number four, which is more user buttons. More user buttons sounds like a real simple thing. They've gone from three on the operator side to six. And that's a huge improvement because anything that can make you more efficient on set means that you have more time to be creative. Whether you're the director or the cinematographer or a crew member, the more things that you can do, the quicker, the more opportunity you have to focus on the actual work rather than fiddling with the camera. So six user buttons is a huge upgrade. So my old setup with the Alexa Mini when it had three buttons was I would have the ND up on button number one, I would have the log check on button number two and the false color check on button number three. And I think that was pretty standard from talking to first assistants, from talking to other cinematographers, that really was the setup. And that's great. You got the majority of the way there, but we can always improve on that. We can always make it more efficient. And the problem was if you had only one ND button when you were cycling through the ND filters, it meant that you could only go up or you could only go down depending on how you set it. So if you were at a 0.6 ND internally, and you wanted to quickly cycle through to no ND filters, for example, it would take three button presses because you'd have to go up through ND 1.2, 2.1, and then zero. Now, with the additional three user buttons, now you can have ND up on button number one, ND down on button number two, you can have log C on button number three, on four, you can have false color, on five, you can have peaking, on six, you can have frame grab. So all of those buttons, even though it doesn't sound like a lot, it makes a big difference. Every 15 seconds or 30 seconds that you can save while you're on set allows you to focus more on the job at hand. So that's only a win. Another boost in efficiency, which brings up to point number three, is the relocation of the media slot. It has now moved to the operator side. It's off the back of the camera. Before it was a huge pain in the ass. They had it on the rear of the camera, and I think that was the biggest mistake that the Alexa Mini made, right? There weren't many. There wasn't a whole lot to complain about, but that was one. It meant that when you were trying to balance the camera with a V-mount or a, an Anton Bauer battery on the back, you had to develop some sort of system that swung away at the back so you could access the media card slot. Now, with it on the left-hand side, it's very easy. You don't have to change anything. It makes the whole rig a lot cleaner and slimmer. Uh, it's just a big improvement relocating that media slot onto the side. All right, next up, that leads us to number two, which is the EVF. This is a huge improvement. As someone who has never been an EVF guy, I've never liked them, I've never used them. On the last two jobs with the Alexa Mini LF, I've used nothing but the EVF. The OLED screen is fantastic. It now has a flip out four inch screen rather than the smaller three inch screen. And it has lots of programmable buttons on there and a little jog wheel. It makes it very, very easy, but 
Despite all of those things being positive, that's not even the best part. The best part for onset efficiency and for workflow is definitely that it is now hot swappable, which means you can plug it in with the camera on. You don't have to reboot the camera to plug it in. And you're probably saying, well, what difference does that make? Why would I want to do that? Well, if you're using a mini LF and you're on a gimbal, and you don't have the EVF plugged in, the only way that you can control the camera is over Wi-Fi or using the WCU4. And if you want to change something, you have those two avenues. Sometimes those don't work. Even the Wi-Fi with the new antennas, it doesn't always work there. Sometimes there's interference. Same goes with the WCU4. Sometimes with the hand unit, the first AC, maybe there's something going on with the camera where they actually have to access the menu system with the EVF. It's the only way into the camera. And before, there was nothing worse than when the first AD would call for playback or would ask to check the gate and the first AC gives you that look when the camera's on the gimbal and it's just like they go over there and they start you see them playing with the hand unit and there's looks of confusion between the first and the second AC and you look over and the first AC is just like now we're gonna have to reboot and it's like it always comes at the worst time when you need those 60 seconds you can't break the flow I mean on commercials it's important but narrative even more so you get into that rhythm of creating and as soon as something falls over, everybody says, okay, now's our time to go in and change things, whether it's the set person, whether it's the fluff and buff team to go in there and mix it up. You don't want those breaks and having a hot swappable EVF where you can just plug it in, there it goes, it's up, it's running, you can change all of the settings. It makes a huge difference. So no more of those feelings when you look over and you see the, the first day scene, it's just like, oh no, it's like 60 seconds just gone. Oh God. So that is all changed. So not only does it look better, not only does it function better, but now it is hot swappable, which is huge. From there, number one, the biggest change, the biggest improvement, no doubt you guessed it by now, is the sensor. It is now one and a half times larger. The way that they describe it is it's two of the normal ALEV sensors, the 35 millimeter versions flipped vertically and stitched together. I don't know if they actually do that, but it's a good way to understand just how much bigger the sensor is than something like the old Alexa SXT or XT or even the mini. It is better, the extra resolution, the extra frame size. There is a depth that you can only get this look one way. Right? And it's why the Canon 5D was so popular when it came out because it was a very unique look. And much like when anamorphic was a thing, back when Airy released the studio, the 4x3, when you could get true anamorphic on a digital sensor. Uh, I think you're gonna find that in the next 18 months. I think you're gonna find this full frame look really is the go-to and it is what people are chasing. And it may not be where you're at in your career to be able to afford this kind of stuff or to be able to work on projects like this, but it's important to know that this is what is coming down the pipe. Full frame is here. And the only way that Super 35 is gonna get saved is by whatever camera area is coming out with in 2020. They've talked about doing something in the Super 35 world, but you can only imagine that this camera, the Mini LF with all of its improvements, we haven't even touched on things like the workflow, how much easier the workflow has gotten with the new Codex mags. No longer do you have to have a proprietary system to download it where you can only do it on Mac. Now you just take one of these little cards, which holds a terabyte of footage, you plug it in to its reader, which is USB-C, super fast read times, and you don't need any software. It just opens up on any computer, Windows, Mac, whatever. It is so much simpler than the old XR mags on the XT or the SXT, it's just so easy. Airy really have taken the best of what the Alexa Mini had to offer and just improved across the board. There isn't anything holding this camera back. Now, it's not all roses. In future videos in the series, we're gonna go over some of the things that they're gonna change along the way because it's still in pre-production mode, so not everything is working as it should. And they're very clear when they send the camera out that that is the case. There's a couple of workarounds for things like anamorphic, for things like playing back footage off of the camera. But I think that all of those things are gonna get ironed out. And this really is an exciting camera. The full frame options are exciting, but also, as we discussed here, the improvements in efficiency are, I think, gonna be a big surprise for people. And as soon as you get used to the system, as soon as you get used to the new LPL mount and lenses start to change over, I think all of the kinks uh, are gonna be ironed out and we're gonna have a really solid camera for a few years. So that was just a brief overview of the camera. Again, this is being shot on the Mini LF, so this is just an example of what it looks like. And uh, I think I'm excited about using it on future projects because you just cannot get these results any other way. So if you like this kind of content, make sure to subscribe. We're gonna do more of this series on the Mini LF. We're gonna go over 
the workflow. We're going to go over some of the good things, some of the bad things in the next video. So be sure to check back for those. And thanks for watching.